Okay, class, I wanted to post this quick example uh, from lecture 10 uh, about calculating a drag force. We covered most of this, but I wanted to go through a quick example for any of you uh, that wanted to see the extra bit. So um, we talked about drag in class and the formula for the drag force uh, looks like this, one half rho u squared um, times the projected area times the drag coefficient, which is a function of the Reynolds number. All right, and um, in order to calculate the drag force, you need to know two things. You need to know the projected area and the drag coefficient. The projected area, um, I'll just write that here, projected area and then drag coefficient. Okay, so to get the projected area, of course, you have to know the object uh, that is being dragged through the fluid. So, for example, if it's a sphere, um, if you look at the projected area, this is going to be a circle. You know, if you think about what that's going to be projected onto some wall, it'll be a circle. So, the projected area there will be uh, pi d squared over 4. Uh, and as I showed the example in class, if you have a cylinder, if the cylinder is oriented in this direction, then that also gives you the projected area of a circle, pi d squared over 4. But if the cylinder is oriented in this direction, then and there's our screen, then we have a square, or a rectangle rather, and our uh, uh, projected area is d times the length where L is this length there, okay? For the drag coefficient, so this is the projected area, for the drag coefficient, we'll put over here, there are um, different drag coefficient formulas in your book for different shapes. So if I have a sphere, um, you know, I have my three different regions. I have the laminar region, I have the turbulent, uh, turbulent wake but with a laminar boundary layer okay and then in the third region I have the turbulent wake and I have the turbulent boundary layer okay and so for a sphere the formula is 24 divided by the Reynolds number uh, for the drag coefficient in the laminar region so that was remember I have my curve and something's coming down like this and then it's kind of flat and then it kind of comes up and it's flat here. So that's this linear region coming down. So that's for the Reynolds number less than 10 to the 2. Um, for the turbulent wake and the laminar boundary layer, um, the coefficient is a constant. It's 0.445 and in the turbulent wake, turbulent, turbulent boundary layer, it's 0.19. And this transition uh, here, this one is the Reynolds number greater than 10 to the 2, but Reynolds number less than 10 to the 5. And this one is the Reynolds number greater than 10 to the 5. Okay, And your book has formulas for spheres and cylinders Okay, and disks. Okay, So this, is, this will be in your book. Okay, And sometimes they have more formulas, and you're welcome to use uh, those formulas are what's on uh, on the sheet. Okay, so let's do the quick example, the number example, just to calculate things out. So here um, we're going to calculate the drag force um, on your hand. Uh, you know, when when you put your hand out of the car when you're driving, okay, so hand out a car window when going, and let's say 60 miles per hour, okay? So I've got a car, you know, driving, a uh, really bad car, okay, and I stick my hand out the window, okay, so the, you know, the wind is coming this way. I don't want to calculate the drag on my hand. So I'm going to assume that this is a disk. 
um, with a diameter of 10 centimeters. So the flow would look something like this. And I'm going to assume I have a disc here with a diameter of 10 centimeters. Okay? And I'm going to assume that U out here, U is 60 miles per hour. And then I need to know some other things. I need to know the density and the viscosity of air. So the density of air is 1.18 kilograms per meter cubed. And the viscosity is, let me look on my sheet here, 1.86 times 10 to the minus 5. And this is Pascal second. Okay, so this is for air. All right, and so I'm going to do some quick calculations. So I want to convert U, I'm going to convert 60 miles per hour. Oops, I'm going to erase that. It's a little off. 60 miles per hour. And I'm going to convert that into meters per second. So my unit conversion I have written down here is that I have 1609 meters per mile. And of course, there is... Uh, 3,600 seconds in an hour. And looking at my sheet to do the calculation, this is 26.82 meters per second. Okay, and then I need to calculate my projected area. And the projected area is uh, here. This is a circular disk. So that's pi d squared over 4, or pi r squared. Okay, but I already know d. d is 10 centimeters. So this is pi over 4 times 0.1 uh, squared meters squared. Uh, and that gives me 0 0.00785 meters squared. Oh, that's going to hurt my hand. Okay, sorry that's a little messy. Kind of going fast, I think. Let me, put, let me just f fix that real quick. Rewrite it. So it's starting to get too messy to read even for me. 0 0.00785 meters squared. Okay, so now how do I go about calculating? You know, I have these quantities that are useful. So now I need to calculate the drag force. I have, uh, let's see, I have 1 half rho u squared, A, and then the only thing I need to do, so I need to calculate the Reynolds number first, use the Reynolds number to decide which region I'm in, then I can calculate the drag coefficient, or you know, find the drag coefficient on my table, except it won't be the sphere, it'll be the disk version, so we'll go look those up. And then um, have the projected area, I have one half rho u squared. So, <clears throat> as always in these kinds of calculations, what I really want to know is the Reynolds number. So, um, calculate Reynolds number. Okay, so the Reynolds number is rho u d over mu. So rho, I just covered it up, it's 1.18 kilograms per meter cubed. U is 26.82 meters per second. Uh, D is 0.1 meters. And all divided by mu, which is 1.86 times 10 to the minus 5 pascal seconds, which is kilograms per meter second. So kilograms cancel, meters cubed, and I have a meters meters, and then one over meters, which that all cancels, and then seconds over seconds, that cancels. Okay, so plugging that all in, I get a value of 1.701 times 10 to the fifth, uh, uh, no, no units, right? 1.7 times 10 to the fifth. Okay, so what uh, uh, region is that in? Um, this is in region three, turbulent wake, turbulent boundary layer. So we need to look up in our book what it is for disk. So here's the book. So I look up in the book where it is at, and I'm in chapter three, and I look on page 57. Okay. On page 57, I don't know if you can see this. Probably not good enough to do on a video. Okay, down here by my pinky. There it is right there for disks. And lo and behold, for disks, 
um, it doesn't have a region 2 versus region 3. This is kind of interesting part about disks. Um, it just has sort of a 2-3 region. And that's because it doesn't have, so I can kind of explain this a little bit. So um, what you see there is that it has this formula that says CD equals 1.17 for the Reynolds number greater than 133. And the plot, if you look at the plot, so this is on page 57. On page 56, you can see a plot here where it has CD versus RE. And you see this. And for disks, it just stays flat. There's no region 3. OK, so why is that? Why would that be? Well, there's no region 3 because if you think about it, I have a disk like this, okay, and I've got flow around the disk, right? And we said region 1 was when it was going really slowly, and region 2 is when I had a turbulent wake, and region 3 was when I had these boundary layers, okay, that were laminar to turbulent. Well, I have a disk, and there's basically no space for there to be a boundary layer on the top and the bottom. This is so thin. It's not like a sphere where in a sphere I have this whole region where I can go around. So there's basically no space for a boundary layer. So it's really just all about the turbulent wake in a disk. So anyway, that's kind of a long explanation to explain why it's just 1.17 for anything greater than 133. And really in this case, anything, you know, 133 is awfully exact to be caring about um, what it is, but greater than 100, okay? So uh, now we've got this is sort of part two here, which is get the drag coefficient. So notice here that why is it a constant? Well, look, this is flat, so that's why it's a constant. Okay, And so um, for drag coefficients, often when, we're you know, when we have that turbulent wake, it's just a number. That makes our calculations for the drag coefficient relatively easy. All right. So last bit here, so now we've got all the quantities, we've got the drag coefficient, we've got the projected area, we've got everything, we just need to calculate the drag coefficient. So that's the last part. Part three to these calculations is calculate the drag coefficient, or the, uh, excuse me, the force, the drag force. Okay, so the drag force is one half rho u squared projected area times the drag coefficient. Let me just make sure I didn't mess it up. Yep, okay, so now I just need to plug in my numbers. Let me move this up a little so I have a little more space for my hand. One half, okay, rho, I said was 1.18 kilograms per meter cubed. 1.18 kilograms per meter cubed. U is something like 26.82. 26.82 meters per second squared. The projected area I said was 0 0.00785. 0 0.00785. And that's also uh, meters squared. And then the drag coefficient I just barely calculated right there. And I said that's 1.17. Okay. Now, just plug all those numbers in, and you get an answer. And the answer I get is 3.90 newtons, which, if you go through and do the unit conversion of, um, let's see, one pound force, oops, I always do that, one pound force divided by 4.44 newtons, that gives you about 0.88 pounds. Okay, so a little less than a pound. That seems a little low to me. If I'm going 60 miles an hour, it feels like if I put my arm out the window, it feels like more than a pound, but not too much more. So we probably, you know, we made a pretty rough estimate for the size of your hand, and um, that actually matters quite a bit what the size is because it goes into this square here. So that can change by several, you know, if you if you adjust that, I played around with that number a little bit. But I left that as 10 centimeters just to make our life easy. All right, I think that's all I've got for you.